What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we are here with Jarko of the Almighty Corp Aklani. Great to be able to talk with you. Thank you so much for being here. No problem, no problem. Good to be here. Yeah. So the new album, uh, Yohala, is scheduled to come out uh, February 5th, uh, which is this week. Do you just want to talk about like how the making of this record was in terms of the songwriting and the recording and the overall intention behind this album? Well, the um, songwriting was what we had the same that we have had for I don't know how long now, <laughs> like forever. Basically, we we never um, we have uh, a few songwriters, Jonne writing most music, um, and then Sami the accordionist writing some, me sometimes writing some, etc. And everybody just works home. We are uh, regard nothing to do with the. Uh, the pandemic or anything everybody just works home um and then we send files to each other like here's a song learn your part mm -hmm. or whatever uh, and we we live scattered around the country so we don't really get that much together to write or anything we do get together to rehearse and and then not writing uh anyway the songs were done somewhere uh i don't know uh, well, early early last year, anyway, everything was finished. We were scheduled to record the album in March or April in the same studio that we have done um, our last few albums. But then that studio decides to decided to close for the duration of the pandemic, so we had to pick a new studio. But it wasn't a, it wasn't any kind of a problem since our producer had a, had his own studio available. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so like everything was like perfectly fine and scheduled, but then the, like all the shows got canceled, of course. Uh, so, so suddenly we had more time than we had we had originally thought, which led to the best thing that happened for the album, which is that we had the uh, had time for a for a proper pre-production period. So we uh, so we actually went through basically everything on the album way before we end of the studio. So all the tiny little things that you can hear on the album, we went through everything meticulously, um, like a month before. So it was, once we got to the studio, that was like the easiest studio session that we've ever had. Mm -hmm. So it's fair to say you were able to use the pandemic to your advantage, right? Well, in that, in that sense, yes. But then again, also the like, uh, like when all the shows got cancelled, it was actually after doing this constantly for the past 15, 16 years, I was actually quite happy to see that, like the uh, clear schedule, of like, like there's nothing for me, like in the next month. But then when you realize that everything, like it's not just a month, so it actually started to annoy quite a bit, quite quickly. But the first few weeks was, not, was nice, having a little holiday. Definitely. Definitely. Do you consider uh, Yulia to uh, almost kind of uh, be like a direct continuation from what we heard off of Kukia, the last album, or do you think that like there's going to be a lot of new elements that are incorporated for this? Uh, it is different. Again, I think I think all our albums have been a bit different than the previous one. Like, like not deliberately, but like natural way how we work and how things work out for us when we start doing doing the material and then again it's always like lately it's always been like at least two or three years between the album so uh, i think it's quite natural that things things and people change a bit uh, i think the the main difference is that um the previous like musically the previous album was probably the lightest that we've done like m most pop um so to say and again this one is probably probably the heaviest that we have done lots of um well heavy material of this one but not so much pop yeah yeah because i remember going from noita <laughs> to kukia and like I, I really enjoyed the last album but i de definitely thought it was a big evolutionary jump from what we heard on albums such as noita or uh manala or anything like that but with yulia being a lot heavier was that like a preconceived idea like what did you go into the studio with that intention no that was not an intention it is 
we've had this thing already for a few few albums that we have been like all of us have been really satisfied with what we have done every time we've released an album we've been like extremely happy that that we really we really made a good album and then then we have already started to doubt ourselves that like how can we how can we make a better album and what should we do next like what like where do we go from here but then it's always been so that yeah like something whatever happens that sort of uh, lights the spark again that you start writing stuff and it it, it is um, perhaps something different than you did the last yeah but once the once it, once you start writing then it all start, starts to take form but you don't know beforehand what what the form would be so it's fair to say like the songwriting process for Corpa Klani is very very organic right is it is i think it would like when when bands or artists in general if they start thinking like what should we do instead of what do i want to do i think that's the that's the start of the problems that they will they will get definitely definitely i feel like the the records that always don't turn out to be the best are usually the ones that were always the most dictated in the songwriting process yeah do, uh, with with the first four singles out that we have now can those almost serve as a clear representation of what the whole album is going to sound like or do you think that there's a lot more for fans to uncover there there is a lot more but i think it's it's still a i think it's a good indicator of what there is because you have now four songs that are quite different to each other it's already quite um wide scope of music there so um you you get i was actually quite 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 a weird um not not weird that's not the correct word but it was a bit of a uh whatever whatever anyway the first song that we re put out as a single was the one that is probably the weirdest that people would have expected since it has the a clear um reggae style uh, section on it and it has then the rest of it's more like a straightforward punk so mm -hmm. so that is not, that that really wasn't the what the whole album was going to be so it was a bit weird opener for people to hear but yeah. but then you've heard you've heard the heavier stuff you like one of my favorites Müll, which we released already uh, it's just very very heavy i really like that one and then the last one that we did the niemi which is almost bordering classic trash metal so mm -hmm. the well, album is mu music quite wide well i've always thought that corpa Clowney's music did incorporate a lot of different elements from folk to thrash to you know heavy metal to even just straight up rock it almost seems like trying new things has to be very very easy for corpa Clowney, even this many albums into your career right yeah you know, it is quite fun funny thing with this band that we we are not are not limited to anything we, we never felt that as i said earlier we never felt that we should do something or we have to do something um, we can actually have very even let's say weird demo and then when you actually hear the hear the uh, final song on the finished album it fits there just fine so um i i think the at this this moment the band is starting to be more than just the songs i mean that it's the whole that, that there's more to it than just what kind of songs you have it is i don't know how to explain this <laughs> what i'm trying to say here yes. but well, in, in, anyway we are not limited to certain style and i think we can we can pick up many different um many different styles and it sort of becomes our music anyway yeah, well, I've interviewed uh, Thomas back uh, on the 2018 headline tour that you did uh, when you were at Gramercy Theater, and uh, like, and, and it, it made perfect sense because people always have fun listening to your music. They always have fun seeing you live, and it seems to, it's clearer than ever that like having fun seems to be almost one of the most important things for Corpa Klani, right? Well, it would be stupid to do this if you were not having fun. I think. Yeah. I mean that's I, 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 that's the main point that you have to entertain yourself at least if, if no one else at least yourself if you're not having fun yourself then what's the point yeah but but it, it is like when it comes to the music musical side it is that people find a lot of fun elements in our in our music 
which is funny because then you once you get to uh, understand the lyrics you realize that it's not fun at all yeah like the like like the like this album like half the album is about dead people <laughs> well I, yeah I, but you can still but you can still dance to it yeah that's the best way i describe this album uh i call it a funeral dance music <laughs> yeah well it, it is that it is uh well uh, dancing on someone's brain <laughs> Well, it, it's funny too because like you you have a lot of fun in doing this, but the music is also very technically impressive at the same time. So, is there ever like a serious moment where you have to be focused and like you know there's maybe some dictated elements in order to execute your sound? There has to be moments of pure seriousness to achieve your technical excellence, right? Yeah, but it, it is it is becoming becoming a problem because like when when like the songs are getting more and more complicated like i don't i mean like not technically that complicated but something that you have to have to sort of concentrate on when you when you try to play them live and so basically the fact is that we can't be that drunk that we have that we were like 10 years ago mm -hmm. uh, but, but then again it's only a good thing i mean i mean it's um they've become a more more complicated and more demanding but then again once you once you rehearse properly and do them right then you, of course they are not that difficult and you can still go out and have fun with them yeah and as as being a bass player too you have two things to worry about because you have a rhythmic element to follow and a and a melodic element to follow like have you always needed the music before you started laying down your parts or have you ever had like a full bass pattern written down and the rest of the band can maybe write over that Oh, no, we've never done the bass first thing. Oh, really? We had, we actually do like when, when we do the albums, we actually have because because the guitars they tend to change quite a bit in the studio. So um, so basically, we always we always do guitars like finish guitars before we start recording. But of course, at that point, I already have an idea what I'm going to play, so it's not a problem. But the tiny little things that will change or affect something then. That's why the guitars are there always first. Mm -hmm. So th every song that we've heard from Corpaclani, it's always started off with that element, and there's there hasn't been any other direction that it may have followed. Uh, no, the original, like the songwriting process, may be different. That some songs, like the actual, like the initial idea, may may have come from whichever instrument that Yolne has had, for example, in his hand. Like he may pick up a ukulele or a mandolin or whatever, and that little melody that he writes starts to starts to um, develop into a song but then when we start actually recording then it's always been for us like drums guitars bass mm -hmm. and then the rest okay and being that you came into corporate Klani in 2005 so uh tales along this road or voice of the wilderness was uh, your first album right uh tales Tales. Okay, so when when you joined up with Corpa Klani, were you kind of looking at Voice of Wilderness and Spirits of the Forest and kind of being like, okay, this is how I have to play, or were you allowed to kind of bring a little bit of your own mix into Corpa Klani? Uh, I, 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 we were co like completely. I was, um, I was, and I'm still, I'm a completely different player, like stylistically, that uh, artsy, the original bass player was. So there was, I, I never had the, I never felt that I have to follow that. Or we, or even I probably wouldn't even be able to follow that. He's quite, uh, I think he's technically quite more, uh, you know, advanced than I was, I, I was or am. So, uh, and I was never, I was never given that kind of, like I was never told to do this or do that. I, I always had like, from the day when I had the, like the free hand to do whatever I wanted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. When and you've taken a new approach to every single album, so I I'd, I'd imagine that you're always discovering new techniques and new ways to enhance your style of playing with every album as well, right? It almost seems like every album you unlock something new that you never thought you had, right? Uh, if you talk the entire band, yeah. and not not me. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, I, I mean uh, I am I have like I'm quite I'm I'm a one trick pony when it comes to playing. I I'm a lazy lazy um, guy. I don't rehearse enough. I don't 
I don't learn new styles. I'm like I'm a trap musician in that sense. That's it. Uh, but uh, we have like like we have tried to for the past couple of albums. We have tried to like when we, when we actually record the album, we have tried some um, different different approaches. Maybe, I mean the like the changing the producer was one of the, the major step there. And then with him, uh, the, the way we work in the studio changed quite a bit. Uh, and not, not the formal uh, order things, but the fact that studio work is quite a little easier, more relaxed. And uh, we, are, we were like getting more and more with every album we were getting more and more um, like we were playing more and more in the studio and we didn't even know why. I mean, like, yeah, that was a good take. Can you do another one? And you, you play another take or, um, you sing another take, but you don't yourself know anymore. That, like, why? Like, I don't know how to do anything, anything better than the previous one. But, so we, decided that, for example, that kind of thing has to stop. And we we did that. And now the many, many things that you hear on the, uh, hear on the album, whether it's the vocals or solos or whatever, they are the first or the second thing. Okay. So, okay. so we, and that, for example, on the previous album already, you heard it clearly on the vocals that it was much fresher than it, than it had been for the past few albums. Mm -hmm. And I have two more questions for you, but I feel like Corpaclani's imagery is just as important as the music itself, like from looking at your photo shoots and watching you play on stage and everything where you have like, for lack of better words, like a choreography or a certain stage persona. Have you always felt like that you and the other bandmates when you're playing live on stage or even in the album, for that matter, that you almost kind of portray a character or is it just a direct extension of who you personally are? Uh, we uh, actually in the... Uh, when I joined, we had sort of, sort of the idea that we have to look, look the part. We have to do something, and we have to dress to, uh, to, like not the same, but to have some sort of theme in the band. And then we have already years ago we have sort of abandoned that idea, and we just like everybody gets on stage and does what they want to, and wears what they want to. Same with the photo shoots. We may think that if you go, uh, like sometimes that you have a photo shoot, you go there, okay, like, do we, have, do we have an idea what to wear? Do we have to have a, some sort of theme? And quite often it's like, no. So we just really, really nice that the band can, like everybody can do what they want to and still, still actually look like a band mm -hmm. and not, a, not just a bunch of guys. Yeah, well, it's funny too, because like, I've always thought, and we touched upon it a, a little bit earlier, but like, you know, when, when, when I see you on stage, when, you know, when I saw you with Ein Seferim in 2015, when I saw you on your headline tour, and most recently when I saw you with Ella Vaite, um at PlayStation Theater, it just almost seems like that you're always having, I, I've always seen such freedom on stage. There's so much freedom, and not just even by you guys, but the audience as well. So, but again, the music is so technically impressive. So part of me wonders, like, do you almost have to bring a similar energy that you bring on the stage into the studio, or but or is playing live and playing in the studio just completely two separate uh, mind frames? They are, they are two separate things. Um, live thing is, um, like you have basically complete freedom other, otherwise than well you have to pay, uh, play your part but we don't have a choreography we don't have anything planned except for the you know like the show starts and we like we try to start it every guy at the same time and we hope that we finish the show at the same time as well mm -hmm. what happens between is a bit, a bit uh, it, it is much more free than that but but of course, when you play live, you st a lot of shows, you start developing certain, like, uh, it's not a choreography, but you start uh, with each other, you start accidentally, uh, like, developing certain, developing certain uh, moves or jokes or whatever that actually 
start at that. At a certain point of a certain song, something happened, actually. Like, people think that, oh, yeah, they have definitely rehearsed this. Well, yeah, the hundred shows before that, maybe. Yeah. But I remember... But then the studio... Oh, you're saying... But the studio, studio is different. Like, we have... We've always had this... Like, years ago, we've had this... <clears throat> Um, image of a hard drinking band, but which we have been. I'm not, not, I'm not denying that. But so, but when we went to the studio, that's a completely different band. That's a that's a band who goes and works. It is there's no, no. It's still fun and you joke and like that, or of course that. But it's not like we go to the studio and drink for three weeks and then start working. So it's a bit more. Um, again, my English is failing me. But anyway, there's a more controlled this way. Yeah, yeah. I remember um, when uh, you played a PlayStation Theater. You had that shark come on stage, and uh, and I remember uh, I was on my way to do an interview during that time, and the shark just finished getting off stage, and that shark scared the shit out of me. PlayStation. Theater shark. Why don't I remember that at all? Oh man, it, it was amazing. It was amazing. How could you not remember that? I don't know. It was the last of the tour, so it's quite understandable that something that like that may happen. Yep, yep. the the last The last show of the tour, from what I heard, is always the hardest one to remember. Good. Uh, yeah. Well, possible. Yeah. But uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I really enjoyed uh, chatting with you about this new album. Just with the release of this new album coming out this week, is there anything we could be expecting uh, to promote this album uh, while we wait for shows to return, like a live stream performance or new merch or anything else you would like to plug? Uh, yeah, we actually just decided like uh, 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 a couple of days ago, we just decided that there's going to be a, this Q&A thing um, this Friday now, like people can join us online and chat with us and watch us getting drunk. Oh, we look like the album's going to be out on Friday. And I think, yeah. And so, so we have the, uh, have actually, we actually had a plan. We are rehearsing band is band's going to be just rehearsing on Friday anyway. So we decided that we'll just, once we all get together, once we oh, why don't we do something proper? And we're actually going to have this Q and A live chat <laughs> online. That's awesome. And uh, are you going to be taking any song requests, possibly, since you'll be rehearsing already? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, like we have the rehearsals during the day, and then when when these things starts, we are probably already drunk. Oh, okay. All right. Well, fair enough. It's, it, for for the for the US US, it's going to be quite early actually in the days because we started at six. The, Six in the evening here, so like, like East Coast time will be like eleven in the morning or something like that. Yeah. Well, I'll be at work, but I'll get drunk at work. It'll be totally fine. I have an excuse. Yeah, it's based. The work is better that way anyway. Exactly. Exactly. The best things in life have been done that way. <laughs> yes. But uh, thank you so much, Darko. Everybody, we are here with Darko of Corpaclani. Yulia coming out this Friday. Be sure to pick it up then. This is Alex from Heavy New York. We will see you next time.